What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we're gonna be doing an in-depth comparison between the new iPhone 14 Pro and last year's iPhone 13 Pro. Now, I'm not just gonna sit here and list off specs. I wanna actually talk about my experience with the new iPhone 14 Pro these last couple of weeks and actually break down whether or not the changes and updates really make any difference at all in my day-to-day -day usage. Most importantly, I wanna also offer my insight as to whether or not I think the new iPhone 14 Pro is worth it if you're maybe considering upgrading. And if you just want the TLDR, the short answer is yes. I think there's plenty of new stuff here that makes the iPhone 14 Pro pretty enticing. The camera upgrades for me have been noticeable. The always on display is a long awaited add on. Even the dynamic island has been useful in some cases as I've gotten more familiar with it, which is probably the most surprising thing, but we'll get into all that stuff in just a moment. Now, physically, it's pretty obvious that Apple hasn't changed the design with these iPhones for a number of years now. And in fact, if you had any pro iPhone, it would probably be hard to tell which one it is just by glancing at it. Obviously, this new iPhone 14 Pro now has, I guess, a selfie camera cutout. That's the dynamic island, which as weird as it sounds, is a significant design change to the iPhone, since it's always had that notch. But everything else up front, like the screen size and the bezels, are all the same. Around back, the Pro iPhone once again gets the super premium frosted glass and stainless steel build. Again, aside from the new color this year, deep purple, there's nothing else that sets the two phones apart. Unfortunately though, there is one minor annoying physical change on the 14 Pro that does make it so that the case from your 13 Pro won't fit on it. The camera area is larger by just a few millimeters all around. And actually the physical camera lenses seem to be a tiny bit bigger too. And you can see the difference that makes when I try and jam my old iPhone 13 Pro case on the 14 Pro. It ain't happening. Since you'll have to get a new case anyway, I would recommend grabbing one from Berga, who were kind enough to sponsor this video. Berga offers an insane variety of phone cases that are both super stylish and ultra protective. They actually sent me two of their different iPhone cases to check out, the Elite Series and the Tough Series. Berga's Elite cases are the perfect combination of style and protection. They're a thick one-piece design with a hard plastic back and flexible rubber sides lined with Berga's own cloud guard material, which helps absorb some 90% of any impact. There's raised edges for the camera and screen as well, so everything is protected. And there's even a soft microfiber lining inside the case to keep your phone comfortable. Berga's tough cases are a two-piece dual layer design that are super easy to take on and off the phone and a bit slimmer too, without sacrificing protection. Best of all, Berga's cases are printed with a high quality image that's anti-fade and anti-scratch, so you know that awesome design will look good for months. Berga sells cases and covers for just about everything, including AirPods, MacBooks, iPads, Apple Watches, and a whole lot more. Click the link below or head on over to berga.com and use my discount code for 15% off your order. Berga's also running a buy two, get two free deal right now, so definitely take advantage of that. And thanks so much again to Berga for sponsoring this video. So another controversial physical change on the iPhone 14 Pro is the removal of the SIM card tray. This mainly applies to folks here in the US. The iPhone 14 Pro is now eSIM only here, and while a vast majority of carriers do support eSIM, the transition has definitely not been seamless. Apple tries to make it as easy as possible to migrate your number and convert to eSIM on the new phone. During setup, the phone recognizes nearby devices with SIMs and phone numbers you can transfer. You can scan a QR code from your carrier as well, which I did and actually worked well, but there's just something convenient about having a physical SIM. Being able to easily pop that card in and out, swap to an international one, switch devices. So all in all, for me, this is something I'm reluctant to get behind. The only other physical change to the iPhone 14 Pro is of course that dynamic island. Sort of a new notch or selfie camera setup that isn't just an aesthetic change, it's functional. You still have the selfie camera up there, of course, along with the face ID sensors, earpiece, secondary speaker, but that little area will also now be kind of a widget and notification spot, depending on the different apps and things you're using. Not every app has a dynamic island widget, at least not yet. Some of Apple's own apps don't even utilize it, but some do, and lots of third-party apps are jumping on it too. So for example, if you have a timer going, the countdown will be shown in that dynamic island area, and you can actually long press to bring up the timer controls. This is the same with like music or videos playing in the background, Apple Music, podcasts, stuff like 
like that. You can see the playback timeline and play, pause, scroll through, or quit, whatever it is that's playing. The dynamic island area for now shows two apps, and it'll also show you notifications. You can see that with the silent switch, that's sort of a new notification animation. Now, to be honest, I didn't think this dynamic island thing would be that useful, but the more I get familiar with it, the more I sort of default to it. It's helpful, it's interesting, it's a way in which that big old notch is sort of functional, and I'm interested to see how third-party developers make use of it with their own apps and some games maybe in the future. So on the topic of the display as a whole, the new iPhone 14 Pro does actually get a slightly improved viewing experience, but a majority of the actual specs remain the same. We once again have Apple's own Super Retina XDR OLED panel, coming in at a resolution of 1179 by 2556. That quirky pixel count yields some 460 pixels per inch, which is the same as last year. And side by side, I think you can see that it's pretty hard to tell the new phone apart from last year's with average everyday viewing. The resolution is the same, so no difference there. I don't think you'll notice any difference in color, saturation, blacks, white balance. To me, the picture looks all the same. And it's still the 120 hertz high refresh rate as well, fast, smooth, and ultra responsive. The main difference is in the 14 Pro's brightness, and specifically its auto brightness for like outdoor viewing. The 14 Pro now offers a peak brightness of around 2000 nits. The 13 Pro maxed out at 1200 nits, and I can say that in the direct Las Vegas sunlight, the difference is significant. The 14 Pro is brighter for longer when I'm using it outside, and for me and my usage, that's a great upgrade. In fact, the 14 Pro now delivers one of the brightest displays you can buy across the entire smartphone market. So if you spend a lot of time outside or maybe fight the glare and auto dimming screen on the 13 Pro, I think you'll be happy with the brightness improvements on the 14 Pro. Also, for the first time on any iPhone, the 14 Pro now has the option to enable an always on display. This is just for the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, not the regular 14, and it isn't an iOS 16 feature for other devices. For me, this has been quite useful. The screen is still bright enough to check the time, glance at my widgets, see some notifications. Obviously, an always-on display has been an Android feature for forever, so I'm used to this using other Android phones, and I like it. I think Apple implemented it quite well. For the out loud listening experience, I'm not aware of any major changes to the speaker setup on the 14 Pro. I guess technically, because of the new dynamic island, the earpiece and speaker grill size and design have been altered a bit, but the sound quality and loudness seem to be the same as last year. Here's a sample from each, so you can hear it for yourself. When it comes to speed and performance, obviously Apple stuck their newest, fastest, most powerful chipset in the new 14 Pro. But to be honest, I think we're at a point now of some diminishing marginal returns when it comes to smartphone power. The new A16 Bionic processor in the 14 Pro is measurably better than the A15 from last year's phone, at least according to the Geekbench scores here. But in real world, day-to-day -day usage, I don't think you'll see any noticeable increase in speed, no matter what you're doing. The only thing I saw was that apps tend to be loaded and ready slightly quicker when I tap on them. But besides that, I just don't see a measurable bump up in overall performance. And that's not a slight at the iPhone 14 Pro or the new processor at all. It's just that the 13 Pro was already plenty fast. And my phone isn't being pushed so incredibly hard day in and day out that it warrants anything better. In fact, I don't think that from like the 11 Pro to the 12 Pro to now, I've seen a huge speed increase with my workflow. So take that for what it's worth. I just think most flagship phones over the last couple of years are more powerful than they maybe even need to be, which is fine, especially if you want this phone to be maybe a long-term investment. I mean, I'm sure this phone will be usable for like 10 years at least, especially with Apple's propensity now to support iOS devices with major software updates for a long time. So if you're looking for a major speed and improvement boost, I'm not sure you'll be blown away by anything here, especially if you're coming from a fairly recent iPhone. As far as the battery life and longevity, my 13 Pro has always been an all-day device, and I had higher expectations for the 14 Pro, since Apple says the new phone should get at least 30 minutes to an hour more life each day. Unfortunately for me, and for 
a number of other people, battery life on the 14 Pro has been slightly worse, and I haven't been able to figure out why. Maybe it's the always-on display, maybe it's the brightness boost, I'm not entirely sure. And perhaps as time goes on, the device will be better optimized for my usage and improve, but whatever it is, so far the iPhone 14 Pro's battery life improvements haven't been much of an improvement at all, and sometimes leads to noticeably less screen on time during the average day. Also, there's no improvements to wired or wireless charging this year. Apple seems uninterested in offering any super fast charging, and the new 14 Pro seems to max out at about 23 watt wired charging and the same 15 watt MagSafe wireless charging speeds. Finally, the single biggest change from last year's 13 Pro to this year's 14 Pro has got to be with the camera setup. And depending on how often you snap pics and film videos, videos, this may or may not be significant for you, but starting with the hardware, the new iPhone 14 Pro's main lens gets a huge upgrade. It's now a 48 megapixel camera with the ability to shoot ProRAW 48 megapixel pictures for extra detail and broader dynamic range. The 13 Pro had just a 12 megapixel main shooter. The ultra-wide lenses appear to be about the same 12 megapixel hardware, but the 14 Pro's spec sheet references a better aperture and slight change in sensor size, which in my experience yields better looking ultra-wide pictures. The telephoto lens seems to be completely unchanged. It's once again another 12 megapixel lens with three times optical zoom, though how the telephoto lens is utilized has changed a little. And the selfie cameras, as far as I'm aware, are similar 12 megapixel lenses again, but the aperture is different on the 14 Pro here, and there seems to be some enhanced stabilization for selfie videos. When it comes to new capabilities and features, I already mentioned the new 48 megapixel picture mode. There's also enhanced video stabilization out for the rear lenses, which Apple demo during their keynote, you could literally be like jogging and the camera will capture perfectly still videos. There's shortcuts to the two-time telephoto zoom on the main picture mode and in portrait mode now. The biggest thing really is just the difference in real world shots. To me, the iPhone 14 Pro consistently delivers brighter looking images with better dynamic range, more detailed shots across the board, whether your subject is up close or miles away. And overall, this phone produces a surprisingly punchy and saturated looking image that rivals even Samsung smartphones now. I take literally thousands and thousands of pictures on my smartphones for all sorts of occasions, and to me, the iPhone 14 Pro delivers one of the most significant and noticeable increases in picture and video quality that I think even the most casual picture taker would notice. I'm gonna have a dedicated camera comparison video between these two phones soon, so you can see every aspect of the pictures and videos in all kinds of conditions, but year over year, Apple continues to put effort into their camera tech more than anything else really on these new iPhones. And with the iPhone 14 Pro this year, the difference is quite significant in my opinion. So what do you get with the new iPhone 14 Pro that you didn't have before? Well, the dynamic island for one, and it's not just an aesthetic change, but a feature add-on. The always-on display is exclusive to the 14 Pros. The screen itself is brighter outdoors for sure, the cameras are improved, and it's technically a more powerful device too. All that to me makes this phone worth the upgrade, more so than some previous yearly upgrades at least too. But what do you guys think of the new iPhone 14 Pro? What more should Apple have added? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.